but I'm not counting the seven minutes because I because I'm indigenous and I have to start in a different way. So I will start the clock in a minute. Ha. <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. Uh, Anin, uh, I just want to say this is the land of the Mississauga Anishinaabe. Not most recently, for a very long hundreds of years time. And <laughs> this land is governed by the One Dish with One Spoon Treaty, which is between the Haudenosaunee and the Mississauga Anishinaabe and the larger Anishinaabe Confederacy because we warred over this land. And that's just a fact. And I would say that this land is also the home of fishing weirs that were the Anishinaabe and the Wendat. They shared them together. And this was a trading center for many nations. And I just want to say, well, also, I'm really happy for the 90,000 indigenous people that live here today. <laughs> now I'll start the clock. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Wanda Nanabush, Anishinaabe Kwe from Bosley First Nation, Wolf Clan. And uh, I come from a, uh, I'm the youngest of 17. And I was thinking about the future of the arts and some of my brothers and sisters, uh, because I'm the youngest, they say that they didn't have the same opportunities to enter the arts like I did. And it makes them, there's a, like a wish fulfillment there that they would love to have. So I think when I was thinking about the future of the arts, that's what I would like to see is that every child, every person who wants to join the arts wouldn't have poverty hold them back. So I'm gonna start with a quote from a white colonialist from France. Uh, <laughs> just because I like to shake shit up. Uh, to create today is to create dangerously. Any publication, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my own words into his, or creation is an act, and that act exposes one to the passions of an age that forgives nothing. Hence, the question is not to find out if this is or is not prejudicial to art. The question for all those who cannot live without art and what it signifies is merely to find how, among the police forces of so many ideologies, he mentions the church, but we have more today, the strange liberty of creation is possible. And in my mind, I have the image from Archer Pachowis, who's a Cree artist here in town. He did a piece called The Future is Beautiful. And I would say also that part of the future is beautiful is that the arts needs to be part of every conversation, not a hived off one. It needs to be part of every conversation from the economy to politics to how we raise our children to education. So the image you see here is the other one that was stuck in my mind, which is Marianne Nicholson, House of Ghosts. And our present time is haunted. We are haunted by many, many histories, histories that we have ignored, many, many violences we've enacted, and many, many beautiful, beautiful knowledges that these ghosts are trying to whisper in our ears and trying to bring forth. And the arts is one place that we do that in. So this is a work that was at the Vancouver Art Gallery in 2008. And it, as you can see, it transforms the front of the gallery into a northwest coast Kwakwakawak ceremonial house. It's 30 feet wide, and it's a site-specific projection that changes from day to night. And the thing with the ceremonial house, it is that door between the spirit world and the human world. And more and more, we understand the way arts bridges that gap. But what she was trying to draw attention to is that this is also the site of a courthouse. So it was the provincial courthouse that would have jailed her people for practicing their arts and culture. And so it's really important to remember that as we walk in this world, we're not standing in the same place together. She stands in the Vancouver Art Gallery as a contemporary artist, loving this space as an artist, but also feeling the pain of her people who were charged for practicing these things in the past. And so we have to understand that about each other. We don't carry the same places, we don't carry the same times, we don't carry the same histories. I'm going to quote her. The house of ghosts asks, acts much like traditional performances executed within the Kwakuwak ceremonies, where through an exhibition, 
of the spectacular, it is believed that spirits can be enticed into communion with humans, allowing them to conduct extraordinary feats. I believe in the creative future. It doesn't shut down creativity. To, we can't shut down creativity today. We don't know who we would become, but we set out these pathways. That's our responsibility. That's one of the points about prophecy. And I'm interested in the fifth world. The fifth world marks out the new consciousness where we relearn our responsibilities to the earth. I'm going to quote Almanac of the Dead writer Leslie Marmon Silkel. The world's capitalist vision is the one world economy. That is their fifth world. But the fifth world is a new consciousness in the hearts of all human beings. The idea that the earth is shared and finite, that we are naturally connected to the earth and with one another. Every assertion of indigenous visual sovereignty is a dreaming. As Scott Mamaday says, we are what we imagine. Our very existence consists in our imagination of ourselves. Our destiny is to imagine completely who, what, that we are. The greatest tra tragedy that can befall us is to go unimagined. The future of arts is this great imagining. This dreaming gives us pathways to a creative future. And more and more, we see artists making work about the pressing issues of our time, like water and climate change, while also maintaining play, experimentation, honesty, intuition that keeps the future open to that ever-transforming and chancy aspects of life that we don't want to lose. So, as artists, and institutions, we've embarked on a profound critique of colonial thought, which lies in subjugating the body to the mind, women to men, white all, thing, all human beings to whiteness, animals to humans, collectives to corporations, truth to the lie, creativity to bureaucracy, peace to war, water to tailing pond, earth to economy. This new consciousness is rising, and its heart is the arts. Thank you. Woo!